Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. <laughs> Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Matt Money Shot sniffing out the Madden cheese. As always got some plays for you today out of the Saints once again. Uh, I said I'm going to try to stick in this book uh, for a little bit. Uh, I'm going to be doing some plays out of the Gun Empty Y Saint. I said in the previous video, if you guys wanted to see more empty formations, I would do that. So we're going to start off with a play. If you caught my gameplay on Tuesday, I used this play quite a bit, the Saints Fork. This, to me, is a play that I put out already. Uh, there's some new wrinkles to it, some new things that I found over time from using it. Uh, so I'm going to go over some new things if you saw that previous video, uh, some new stuff from this play. And then, like I said, I'm going to work some, uh, some other big plays out of this formation as well. So like I said, I've put out uh, this play, I think, earlier in the year, maybe around the start of the season because this is a play that I used even last season. Uh, but there's some new wrinkles, some new adjustments that I've found in it. Uh, the one adjustment that will never change is putting Kamara here, the X route, on a slant. Uh, what that does, I'll try to work that side alone, but what that does is it typically he'll come open underneath that route. Um, the user typically won't be paying attention to that side based off of the fact that you have three wide receivers on the right side. They typically won't be waiting for that delayed uh, slant route to come across. But it works pretty well with the high-low with the Y route. Like right here, I can tell that the Y route's going to get open. Um, so that's something that if you want to split the field in half, you always have that where you can read high-low for those two routes. And the, the slant's also a really good check down. Uh, but I'm typically working on the right side. And what I'm going to do on the right side is really just a read. Like right here, I always, I'm pretty much always going to put the B route on a streak now. That's something that I didn't used to do. I used to let him, leave him alone. Uh, but if it's a cover three, I want him to pull that cornerback. Or if it's a cover four, it's the same thing. Any off coverage, I want them to pull that cornerback back so the RB route can come up and underneath it. Where the original route doesn't really do that as well. A lot of times, he'll once he starts slanting in, he'll disregard it. And then it becomes uh, less effective. So, like I said, putting him on a streak. And then I also put the A route on the streak quite a bit. Um, because that, if it's a cover two, a lot of times he'll be open right in between the safeties. And if it's a cover three, a lot of times he'll be open right between, um, you know, in the seam where the, the safety and the corner don't, don't really cover. But ultimately, I'm looking for this RB route. Now here, uh, I, don't, I, I don't know if he'll catch that. He, I'll, I'll call that a catch. Uh, but you can see that looked like it was a hard flat cover two. So, like I said, I, I pretty much always streak these receivers now, and this is pretty much the play and how I run it. But the biggest, the play that I'm looking for the most is going to be the RB route. Now, if we have a cover two, that's the only time where if I want to work a high low, I can leave the A route doing what he's doing. But I still pretty much want to streak the B route. So that's pretty much the only time, that's pretty much your option, is you can either do that or, like I said, streak this tight end and give yourself a little bit more of an explosive play, which like I said right here, looks like a cover three, just hit him right at the cover three seam. A lot of times your user won't cover that. It's really a quandary for the user because they have, if they do stay home and they're trying to, to guard the middle of the field, a lot of times they'll hit the RB route. A lot of times they'll try to use the RB route because that is, even though I haven't hit it yet, that is pretty much my number one play on this particular route. There's so many that I could really say are the number one reads to this play. It's really hard to, that's why it makes this play so hard to defend. But the RB route is a route that I typically am looking for first, even though I haven't hit it yet. And that's typically going to be the first read. You can see right there, Kukli was all over it. But it depends on what the user does. There's so many other routes that are open. Like the A route has to be user is pretty much going to be covered. The, the X route has to be user is pretty much going to be covered. And the RB route has to be user or it's pretty much going to be, uh, going to be open. So like right there, finally get that look where I'm, I'm waiting for that RB route. So whatever your user's doing, like I said, if I hit this RB route one too many times, like hopefully I can do here, although this man coverage does a pretty good job on it. You can see it still gets open though. But you know, it's really it's really a game where whatever the user tries to take away, you have two other routes that are always going to be open. The Y route, I actually, like I said, that's a really good route. I hit that already, but I really don't look that way too much. There's a cover two, like I said, it's a really good cover two play. I probably should hit the tight end as he was streaking up the middle. But you can see every route here pretty much gets open at some point. It's all about the reads. And then the B route here, uh, we saw that do a pretty good job against cover two. Like I said right here, this is you know this streak. Uh, if you have a, if you have like a Darren Waller or a super fast tight end, I mean he's going to be gone. Another play that I run quite a bit, um, probably my most my second most used play in this is the Saints goes whip. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll pick that first. Um, this here is a little bit more cover specific. If somebody's running a lot of all out man blitzes, I'll pull this out. Um, I don't even know if they have the uh, the type of blitz that most people type like to run, but here we go. We got the odd. So let's go and let's say they're running a, a pinch buck zero. So the reason I run this play, number one, the zig is going to beat the pinch buck zero. The I, I typically 
I could run it just like this. You know what I mean? This is fine because I have at least one zig. But if I run it like this, as you can see right there, I get sacked. I don't quite have the mobility that I typically do in my in my gameplays. Um, but uh, if I run it like this, I just need to kind of like sidestep and hit this zig, and you can just you can just catch and run and and, and you know dink and dunk your opponent to death. Um, you just have to know where the blitz, where the free blitz is coming from. But I typically want to put uh, both slot receivers into that look because if I only have uh, the Y route doing that, eventually the user is going to wise up and they're going to chase that. So if you do it on both sides, they can't. You know what I mean? You can't use it both sides. And then, like I said, still an issue, like I said, Drew Brees isn't really quick enough um, to do this, you know, very act like I typically have like Mike Vick or, you know, somebody with a little bit more mobility. This is not really my look. And then you can see we get a different guy every time coming off the edge, but it's still a really successful way to go when you have people running their all out man blitzes. So now I'm going to run against random. And this play has a couple of different reads. I mean, I definitely want. Uh, if it's a cover three, which this does not appear to be by any means, uh, the RB route is really going to be the play. Um, you can see right here, I guess it was like an all-out blitz. I'm not exactly sure what the coverage was, but you can see when you leave him alone, he's going to be a, a good route. But when I call this play, typically the RB route is one of the first reads. The A route is really just to uh, give the user something to chase. And then you can see you have the same high-low concept between the, the zig route and the, uh, the crossing route. You can also, if you want to just do something, you can always just put the uh, the, wire, the triangle route on a crosser. As you can see right there, I just had to make a possession catch right in front of the guy. So that's pretty much the read. The RB route and then your crosser um, is, is just something to keep the user honest. Uh, which you can see, he still gets over me right there. It's, it's a good route. If the user doesn't follow it all the way across, it's a good route. It's going to make some plays. So let's do this one more time. Definitely got to cover three here. This is a super simple read with this guy right up the seam. So, like I said, this type of spread formation is just really good um, against pretty much any coverage, pretty much all these plays. And the last play I'm going to show, I'm going to show some home runs. Uh, I mean, I could show either of these two plays. This is the Saints corner or the Saints drags runs pretty much the exact same way as far as the setup. But I'm going to go ahead and call the Saints drags. And uh, this is a pretty specific play to cover two. So this play here, all I'm going to do, motion in Kimura, motion in my running back. He's going to come to the line, uh, and then I'm going to put him on a streak. Uh, Cook here, I also want to streak him, and I typically want to streak the B route. Got to check down in the RB route. He'll do the job there. Uh, but all these guys really are just the pullback coverage. The, the A route, once again, because of all the streaks, is going to be covered right over, or is going to be open right over the middle unless it's user cover, as you can see. But I typically want to throw this outside, and I'm typically going to need space, so it's something I typically want to run to the open side of the field. Because the way that I'm going to pass lead this route, I'm trying to hit the Y route. That's the point of this particular uh, this particular look. So here we go one more time. Like I said, just pretty much just sending everybody on streaks, trying to pull the coverage inside as much as possible. And then you can see right here. I mean, hopefully I don't have to. You see, if I would have passed led that from the from the from the center, it probably would have been out of bounds. I don't necessarily. I mean, I have the, the my fastest guy there too, but I don't necessarily have a ton of team speed on this particular team. Um, but you can see how, you know, I mean, I, I really don't have to wait too long right here. He just gets passed, and we just have a really explosive cover two home run play. Cover two, I mean, a lot of people, you can look for that tight end, but a lot of people will have, um, they'll have, a, sometimes they'll put the mid third with the linebacker, or like I said, they'll use it back. But this outside route, they will not use that, that outside route back. And if I wait too long, you can see that, um, you know, it gets just the longer I wait, the closer I get to the boundary. There are two plays right now. They're right in front of you. The Saints under and the Saints goes whip. So starting off, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pick the Saints uh, under because I think this is the best one right now. This is a cover two and a cover three one play touch. And I'm going to go over both in this video. So, I mean, normally when I run a play like this, I would uh, substitute the Th Thomas's route with my fastest receiver. Maybe like Ted Ginn. Thomas is only like 89 speed in this game. He's not very fast. But on this particular play, you don't have to make any adjustments at all. You just have to time the throw. You're going to see, like I said, the B route gets outside. And then if I uh, send it up top, you can see he just runs right past the corner, right past the safety. No adjustments on the play whatsoever. Let's go and let's watch the replay to show you what I'm talking about here. I mean, I should have did it a little bit differently. I should do it where, where this guy's on the streaks. So you can see the difference. You can see he gets jammed off. You know what I mean? Even even on that route, it's just a simple comeback route. He's still getting bumped inside. Both of them are to the cover two safety because that's the plan now. That's what EA's doing now. They're bumping these guys so that they're both, look at them, right next to each other. Neither one of them are going to be open at any point in time. And if they were running a streak, they'd run right in that safety. So let's go and let's watch on the other side. Same, same thing. So like I said, right here, he does not get bumped. He runs outside of the press. His route 
basically the beginning the release of his route is impossible for the cornerback to redirect uh it's either that or it's just not programmed either ea when they did this they didn't program anything for a route like this but you can see how he runs inside same thing happens to this guy he's getting bumped in to that safety's lane you know what i mean they're still pushing him into that safety's lane but this guy right here runs right around it and he basically is gone like i said i don't really have a speed guy out here but if i had a 93 or higher speed guy i mean it would be it wouldn't be close as you can see he's just basically running a route that just runs right down the field for a touchdown now there's lots of other things that i could do uh to accentuate that i mean if i put the a route on a streak um, if i put the x route on a streak i mean i'm gonna basically i'm gonna have even more openings on the field uh, but like i said watch the x route watch how the x route's still getting bumped off the a route here like i said he doesn't get bumped off at all you can see how he just runs right up the center of the field and it's all created based off of that one route that's not getting bumped so since the B route's not getting bumped, I mean, the X route, he's just, I'm only using the X route of the streak to basically hold that other safety to the left. He's going to get pressed inside. You're going to see right now, he's getting pressed inside like he's been getting pressed inside. Uh, but basically, I mean, he's just wide open. But basically, uh, the, the route where the receiver's not getting pressed inside is why this play is going to work again. So if you're not very good at making adjustments or you're not, you know, very good at reading a defense, whatever, if somebody's running a lot of cover two, you can call this play, run it just like it is, and it's going to be a one play touchdown against cover two uh, because of this route. I mean, I might run out of bounds here. But you can see, I mean, if you pass lead too dramatically like I did there, you can run out of bounds. But you can see how easily it beats it anyway. I mean, even if you don't need a 50-yard touchdown bomb, you can see how uh, you're still going to have success. I mean, you know what I mean? It's just once you get past that cornerback, he's just gone. Like I said, I continuously am almost running out of bounds but you can see how how easy this is it gets past the cover too all because they can't press you know what i mean this is an unpressable route so let's go ahead and let's move on i'll show you how this can also beat cover three so this play is also a really good one play touchdown against cover three um, I find that, you know, I, I'm trying to make this as little adjustments as possible for people watching, but you need to at least make one adjustment on a play like this. You really have two options. The easiest way to do it is just put the uh, the Y route on a streak, and that's all you really need to do. You're going to see right here, the, uh, the cover three single high safety really gets flooded, and then you can see how I can just pass lead away and I can make that a really easy touchdown. That's based off of the comeback route. That's based off of the crossing tight end, everything. It's a lot easier if I just put the A route on a streak also, but for people that aren't really good at making adjustments, um, you know, you can always just put the Y route on a streak. If I put the A route on a streak, it'll pull that safety over and give a lot bigger window than what I just had, as you can see right there. So if I have my choice, I'm streaking them both. So the easiest way to do it is just putting uh, the Y route on a streak. So like I said, I mean, if I really want to kick it up a notch, put him on a streak, putting Murray on the out route and the smart routing him, this is going to be an even bigger play uh, because that out route holds that cover three cornerback down even more. I forgot to put the tight end on a streak to complete this, but like I said, the full setup, I'm going to do this one more time to show you what would be the ideal full setup if you are, um, you know, if you're if you're fast enough on the sticks, a lot of people aren't. But the full setup would be streak cook, streak gin, put get, uh, put Murray here on an out route and then smart route. Like I said, you can see how fast I did it. Starting over, like I said, that takes about like two seconds, not even, to do all those adjustments. But like I said, I know some people struggle. So like I said, big gap out here. Uh, and then like I said, I mean, when they see this formation, a lot of times they're probably gonna be worrying about that B route, um, the receiver on the outside, uh, which they're, you know, if you beat them once or twice in a cover too, they're not going to know why that happened that way with Thomas. So that's it. That's the video. I'm going to go to end the video there. If you guys want to see more of this formation, like I said, let me know in the comment section with the like button. I'll do that next. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. Moish it out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.